Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do the 10 crafty um, questions and I was um, tagged by Helen at Moss Cottage and by Sonia Stepto and her channel is Sonia Stepto and thank you very much ladies for tagging me. So let's just get started. Um, I'm just going to do a little fussy cutting while we're chatting. But um, so what is my name? My name is Amy Johnston and I live in Michigan in the United States of America. And how did I get my channel name? Well, I had a channel name that was, I originally had set it up for eBay when I was looking for some pottery equipment and I had to sign up for that. So I, my name was Dream Potter because I was dreaming of getting my equipment. And um, so then that was my YouTube channel. And then when Google took over, they said you had to put your real name on there. And I was kind of like, I didn't want to put, you know, they always say, don't put your real name on the internet. And so I used my first and middle initial, and that's where Al comes from. And then um, I just used part of my last name, and that's how I came up with Al John. And I figured that sounded enough like a real name that, you know, they wouldn't know it wasn't my actual name and they would let me do it because it said that you had to put your name on there. So that is where Al John comes from. It is just a shortened bit of my name. And then your favorite craft. Well, I would have to say that my favorite craft of all time um, is pottery, and that is something that I have loved since I was a child. When I was a little girl, my parents used to take us camping at a place um, in northern Michigan called... Um, interlock and fine arts camp and it was actually a fine arts school that had a campground next door and um excuse me <coughs> excuse me um and so we would go and camp there and we would camp right next to the fence the whole school was fenced in and then in the evening time, the kids would come up to the fence and they would talk to us. And they were from all over the world. So I can remember once there was a girl from Switzerland and, and she was here and she was very homesick. And I was only about five or six. And I can remember thinking, how could she be so far away from her home? You know, it was, it was just amazing to me. I, I felt so bad for her. Um, and my dad would pop popcorn on the fire and put it in paper lunch sacks and throw it over the fence to all the kids and we would all just visit and that was really wonderful but at the camp these kids were there to go to school to learn different things and they had music and dance and art and um and you could go and you could watch them um practice and that type of thing so um my sisters they always liked to go watch the ballet and the ballet was okay but it really wasn't, you know, for me. I liked to watch the pottery class. And, um, you know, they didn't have air conditioning or anything, so all the doors were wide open. And you could stand outside the door. There was a chain across the door. So you couldn't go into the classroom, but you could stand outside the door and you could watch. And one time, um, the teacher walked out of the class, and I was watching, and... and one of the kids said, come here, come here. So I snuck under the chain and I ran in there. He picked me up and stuck me on his lap and he kicked the wheel just as soon as it started to go around and I was just going to touch the clay. The teacher came back in and said, you, out. So I never did get to touch the clay, but I, I've dreamed of it all my life. I've loved pottery. Um, you know, it just, it just amazed me. So um, when my youngest daughter was a teenager, we there was a pottery class came open at our local art center and so we signed up for it and we were the only two that signed up for it and they said if if we have to have three people to run a class so I asked my girlfriend I said you know I'll pay for the class if you'll go you know they've got to have three people and she said I just don't have the time for it you know it was a weekly class for a while and she said you know I, I just can't do it you know so I was like really sad and then I came home and I got to thinking about it and I thought okay so I signed her up anyways she never came to class but they had three people that were paid for and signed up and you know so it wasn't my fault she didn't come to class and so we got to get it and basically it was like getting a private class for the two of us um because we were the only two in the class so that was really cool and um I'll show you some of the pottery that I made there so this is one of the very first bowls I made I actually think this is the very first bowl that I made 
and um, I loved the way that it turned out, and so I kept it. Most of my pottery I've sold. So, and the very first cup that I made, I always liked little cups, so I did that. And then this is a honey pot, and I found a little honey stick at a secondhand store, so I bought it to stick it in there. But I think that I made this honey pot, but my daughter is the one that came up like with the design, and she actually made the very first one. She may this may be hers too. I'm really not sure, but I just think that that is just so cool. It looks like a little beehive, and I just loved the way that that one turns out. And then I made a gr this is a gravy boat, and um, this one is not fired. So this one, my mom got sick and I had to stop doing pottery because pottery is a very messy um, craft and it's something you can't clean up from really quickly. And when she needed something, she needed it right away. So I, um, I put it aside for then and that's been about 12 years ago. So someday I will pick it back up again. I do still have my electric wheel. I did sell my kick wheel. And I still have my kiln that never got used because I got it right before she got sick. And um, so I never did actually get to use it. But this is a light ball that I made. And you just put a light here in the bottom. And, um, and then it says live, love, and laugh on it. And then they have little holes in it so that the light will shine through. And then the bigger dots here, those are holes too. So someday these will be fired and painted, but um, that's my favorite craft. I guess that I would have to say that right now um, my favorite craft is journaling. I'm really enjoying, um, enjoying that, and I really never thought that I would. You know, I used to watch people make the journals, and it's like, oh, those are pretty and everything, but it's like I would never use one because I was never, you know, a journal is a diary basically um, the way I looked at it. And I've never kept a diary ever in my lifetime. I've tried, but it just never worked out. Writing was not something I enjoyed doing. But um, then I made my lap book and for my trip to our daughter's house. And that just, you know, it, I used it. I actually used it. It really surprised me. So, um, and I've made journals for my daughters, and I made some journals for a, a friend um, that had a baby. So I made her a baby journal, and then I made one for her daughter. So, um, you know, I just, I really got into it. I like all of the different, you know, it's just, it's such an eclectic mix of, of crafts that go into it, making the pockets and just all the different things that you do to make the journals. It's really a fun craft. So that's my favorite right now. And my favorite place to shop. Well, I have been crafting ever since I was young. So I have got a, a art room just completely full of supplies. Other than glues and that type of thing, I don't really need anything. And um, so really my favorite place to shop is the recycle store because as an artist, I love the bits that you get from there and the different things that you can do with them and the different types of um, projects you can put them in. And I love recycling. And um, so I love our recycle store. And then I also like the Dollar Tree and the dollar stores um, because I'm cheap. I am just cheap. I, <laughs> that's what I am. And, and then I love secondhand stores. And again, because you're, you're recycling, repurposing something and like cutting up this book, um, is something I never would have done before, but when it comes right down to it, the secondhand stores, if they don't sell in a while, they have to throw them away. They just don't have room to keep them and they've always got new ones coming in. So if I don't take it and use it this way, then they're going to go in the in the garbage. So I, I don't have a problem um, tearing apart books anymore. And um, so that's my favorites. Recycle stores, dollar stores, and, um, and secondhand stores. Oh, my five, top five crafty channels. This was a really, really hard one because, you know, it's hard to, you don't want to leave anybody out. And especially when they're only asking for five, you can't even come close to listing the amount of people you watch. Um, but so I just had to choose some and I chose the ones that I do watch the most. Um, the most, my favorite, very favorite channel is Sonia Stepto and Sonia and I started around the same time in YouTube and we became really good friends and we've been friends ever since. 
and you know I just I love watching her channel she has such a great mix of of crafty projects to do she does a lot of sewing and um, which is something that I have never really done much of my mother was a, a beautiful sewer and quilter I just never picked that up from her and um, now I'm um, watching Sonia do it I just it's something that that now I can see myself doing you know it's I, I didn't want to do it when I was younger but I really want to learn it now and I've learned so much from Sonia um, on, on that front so and then Roxy creations I just love listening to her chat I love to hear her stories and um, and she just does the most wonderful collage which is something that I was never good at and I'm getting better at whatever you try if you're not good at it, you're not going to get good at it unless you just keep doing it. Nobody starts out and picks something up the very, very first time and all of a sudden they know exactly what they're doing and they're just wonderful. Now, you know, there are naturals, but but in general, we all have to learn our craft. And even if you're a natural, you still have to perfect that craft. So, you know, so if you try something and it's not working out, just watch a lot of videos. Practice and practice. The more that you do, the better you will get. And so, you know, I just love watching her collage because I've learned just a lot just watching her and just going, well, I'll just try, you know, like layering things like that. And, you know, I've gotten better at it. So um, I love watching her channel for that. Lizzie Brewer, um, Elizabeth Brewer, I just love watching her channel. And, um... And she does also just a lot of crafts, and she is just fun to listen to, and, you know, and just, I, I love to listen to people tell about what they're, you know, what's going on in their lives. That's interesting to me, and usually I'm crafting as I'm watching, and so it, um, you know, it's nice to hear the stories in the background. You know, I love tutorial channels, too. I wish I could do the chatty thing, but I really can't. And then again, I don't really leave my house but once a week. So there's really never, not a whole lot going on here. So, um, And then Nick the Booksmith. I learned how to make my lap book from her. And um, and she is fun to watch. And, and she gives great tutorials and teaches you how to do things. And um, G. Kerr. Um, however you say that, it's G-I-K-E-R-R. -R. I really like her channel. Now, she does great tutorials and, you know, and she has just some of the most beautiful projects and really easy to understand. So, but there's just so many more that I watch, you know. Right now, I watch all the popular ones um, when it comes to the journaling, like Gail Agostinelli and, um, was it, uh, Scrappy Dappy Duda, something like that. Scrappy Dappy Duda. Um, I love watching her too. And there are just so many out there that um, just whatever you're interested in, put it in there and you will come up with tons and tons of videos. And then just choose the ones that, that you really in, that you really like. Next, my favorite crafting tools. Well, I have to say that my favorite crafting tool that I just really would not want to live without is my guillotine cutters. I love guillotine cutters. I don't like the kind of cutters that kind of slide. The guillotine cutters are more expensive, um, but to me, they're just the easiest way and fastest way to cut a piece of paper. Um, I have my, this is my little tonic studio. And this one is like five by eight, five by nine. I use this one at my chair all the time. It's nice and, and compact. I have a large 12 by 12 um, tonic and another 12 by 12. But I do have to say that the tonics are my favorites. I really like the Tonic Studio um, guillotine cutters. So, and sharp scissors. You just can't do anything without sharp scissors. And so I used to, when I was little, you know, my mother was like, don't you touch my fabric scissors and cut paper or anything else. But... You know, at the time, I didn't really understand, you know, you're going to dull my scissors. Well, now as someone who uses scissors quite often, yeah, really makes a difference. A nice, and you don't have to buy expensive scissors. If you buy the ones from the Dollar Tree, they're sharp when you buy them and they're $1. And eventually, when they're not sharp anymore, you just buy another pair. So for a dollar, it's definitely worth it. And, you know, if you buy the really expensive ones and you're cutting paper with them, 
they're going to get dull. You know, scissors, scissors and paper, you know, paper dull scissors. So, um, you know, don't worry about it if you don't have, you don't have to have the best scissors, just a sharp pair of scissors. And really, I think that those are my, those are my favorite crafty tools and glue. I can't do without glue. Um, you know, I, I just glue everything really. So I have, but be careful if glue is one of your favorite crafty tools, because I can't tell you how many drawers and baskets full of glue that I have. And the problem with that is, is Sometimes they dry out before I even get a chance to use them. So, but I love my glue. I love to have every different kind of glue. I have wood glue and PVA glue and just all sorts of glue. So that is another one of my favorite crafty tools. <coughs> Where did I get my love of crafting? I have to say that my father loved to work with wood and, um, and my mother worked with fabric. She made clothes for us. Um, you know, she made quilts. She made the most beautiful, her quilts when she was younger up until she, she really got older, all of her quilts were completely handmade. Everything was hand sewn, hand, um, hand quilted, hand tied, um, whichever way she did it. And, so, you know, she had quilts that took her a year to make and her quilts were gorgeous. Um, and, and she did other crafty things too. Um, but mostly her crafting was sewing and, you know, and Papa was um, building things and both of them gave me uh, my love of crafting. Um, when did you start crafting? The earliest crafting that I can actually remember, um, I was five years old and I actually remember sitting in a high chair which normally you wouldn't put a five-year-old in a high chair, but I had been dressed and sat in a high chair, and I remember it for a few reasons. Um, and my mother gave me green clay, which is the clay that you do when you're doing floral arrangements. And we weren't allowed to touch that. You know, I always wanted to play with it, but I was never allowed to. And she gave me that, set me in the high chair, and, you know, was getting herself ready and everybody else ready. And, um... It was when my sister passed away. And so, you know, I, I remember it then. I remember, you know, obviously even before that, because I always wanted to play with her green clay, but I remember it because she gave me the green clay, which was just very, um, it was a surprise to me. And at five years old, you know, understanding exactly what was going on was not, you know, really in my thought process. So I've crafted as long as I can remember. I've done pretty much everything and anything. Um, I've tried. I do not draw well. I've never drawn well. And I do not paint realistic pictures anymore. I don't care to. I don't want to. I, I, have, I used to paint on glass, and those were actual pictures. Um, I much prefer mixed media and abstract, and that is... Um, that is what I do now if I paint. Um, and I just really pretty much love every type of craft. Favorite project that I've ever made? I really don't know. I, I, I really couldn't tell you. Um, I did build... My husband wanted a flat screen TV and we got him a flat screen TV way back after, when they first came out. It wasn't very big. But it was too big to fit where the box TV fit in our in our little TV stand um and so i built a 16 foot long entertainment center that held his tv which now that tvs have gotten bigger and cheaper um it, <laughs> the tv still sits up there but it doesn't fit into the box that i built for it for the tv and um and i built on both ends i built shelves that held all of our vhs tapes and underneath i built six cabinets or six cupboards that hold that held um well they still hold um our board games because we didn't have any kind of cable tv or anything so we did a lot of games and puzzles and and that type of thing um and i have to say i don't know that that's my favorite project i would not build something that large again i built it in my house because i built it after my mother got sick so i couldn't go out to my workshop um and, but it was, 
it was a big project and it was a messy project especially since I was building it right in my living room and um, so I guess that I would have to say I'm very proud of that project I just still don't know that it's my favorite but that is one of my one of my favorites so that is the 10 crafty questions Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I will um, put the links below of the crafty channels that I mentioned and Helen and Sonia who who tagged me in this in this challenge. Thanks again, ladies. It was fun. It, it's fun to stop and really think about some of these things, you know. What do you use the most and what craft do you like the best? And, you know, and not everyone has to have a best craft. I just really don't. Um, you know, I know that I love pottery but I don't even do it right now. So, and in crafts just change and change. I never thought I would ever make a journal because it's like, oh, I'll never use it. And now that's what I do most of the time is make journals and things to go in journals. So you never know where you're gonna be a year or two from now. So I'll leave that off with, this is a lady slipper. This is my mother's favorite flower. They grow wild in the woods behind us when we were little, but you weren't allowed to pick them because they're an endangered species. So you could only find them and then let everybody know that you found one. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.